Hello world, it's Siraj, and today we're going to code up a three-layer recurrent neural network that can predict the sum of two binary numbers in under 80 lines of Python. But first, I want to show you guys what a genius I am. I'm going to recite the alphabet backwards. Ready? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Z, Y, Four. Damn it. The reason it's so hard to repeat the alphabet backwards or sing songs backwards is because we learn these concepts as a sequence. And when data is represented as a sequence, positional memory matters. So let's say we wanted to train a neural net on a video of a top spinning on a table. Each data point would be a frame of the video. So if we wanted to predict where the top would be in the next frame, it would be super helpful to know where the top was in the last frame. Sequential data like this is why we build recurrent neural networks. Plain old neural nets expect fixed size inputs and have fixed size outputs. So the state of the hidden layer is based only on input data as it all flows in one direction or feed forward. In a recurrent net, we incorporate the concept of memory. In order to do this at each time step, we input a combination of the input data and the hidden layer at the previous time step recursively. So if we try to predict the next word in a song that contain phrases like, I like eggs and I like toast, brilliant songwriting, I know. And our network tried to predict the next word how would it know what follows I like? It needs to know what part of the song it's in and hidden recurrence helps it do that. We're just using copy to help us copy things and numpy to do math. We're gonna start out by writing a sigmoid function. This function will help us map any value we feed it into a value between zero and one. It helps convert numbers to probabilities. We'll also write a function that generates the derivative of the sigmoid. The derivative is the slope of a sigmoid at a given point. The derivative will help us calculate our error during training later on. Next, we're gonna create a lookup table that maps integers to their binary representations. We'll initialize it as empty and set a max length of the binary number we'll be adding. Then we'll compute the largest number possible to represent with the binary length we chose, eight. Our lookup table is then filled with binary numbers so that we can easily return the binary value of any integer we input. Now it's time to initialize our input variables. First, we'll set our learning rate, then our input dimensions. Since we will be adding two numbers together, we'll be feeding in two bit strings, one character at a time. So we need to have two inputs to the network, one for each of the numbers being added. Hidden dim defines the size of our hidden layer that will be stored our carry bit. And lastly, we define our output size. Since we're only predicting one sum, we'll set it to one. We'll initialize three matrices of synapses. The first synapse matrix connects our input layer to our hidden layer. So it has two rows and 16 columns. The next synapse matrix connects our hidden layer to our output layer. So it has 16 rows and one column. The last synapse connects our hidden layer in the previous time step to the hidden layer in the current time step. It also connects the hidden layer in the current time step to the hidden layer in the next time step. We'll just keep on using it. So 16 rows and 16 columns. Next we need three variables to store the synapse updates for each of the matrices. Once we have enough synapse updates, we'll update the matrices. All right, let's start training it to kill humans. I mean, I mean uh, predict binary sums, yeah. We're gonna iterate over 10,000 training samples. We'll start by generating some random addition problem. We'll initialize our first variable to use our lookup table to find the binary form of it and store it in A. Then we'll do the same thing for B. We'll sum both integers and get the binary encoding for the sum, C. We we'll want to store the neural network's predictions in an empty binary array, which we'll call D. We'll reset the error measure to zero every time. This will help us see how each new bit of data contributes to our predictions. We then initialize two lists. They will keep track of the layer two derivatives and layer one values at each time step. And since time step zero has no previous hidden layer, we initialize one that's off. Okay, now we're ready to iterate through the binary representation. We'll generate an input first. This is a list of two numbers, one from A and one from B. Y is the output and is the value of the correct answer, either one or zero. Now it's time for the real magic step of neural networks. We construct our hidden layer by propagating our input to the hidden layer. Then we propagate from the previous hidden layer to the current hidden layer. We sum both of these two vectors and pass them through the sigmoid function. After both the previous hidden layer and input have been propagated through their various matrices, we sum the information. We'll then construct our output layer. It propagates the hidden layer to the output in order to make a prediction. We can't forget to compute how much the prediction missed. We'll store the derivative in a list, holding the derivative at each time step. Then we'll calculate the sum of the absolute errors to track propagation. We'll end up with the sum of the error at each binary position. We'll then need to round the output to a binary value and store it in the designated slot of D. We copy the layer one value into an array so that at the next time step, we can apply the hidden layer at the current one. Okay, so we've done the forward propagation for all time steps. We've computed derivatives at the output layers and stored them in a list. Now it's time to back propagate, starting with the last time step and propagating to the first. 
first. We index the input data, just like before, and select the current hidden layer from the list, then the previous hidden layer, then the current output layer. It's time to compute the current hidden layer error, given the error at the hidden layer from the future and the error at the current output layer. Yay, all of our derivatives have been back propagated at this current time step, so we can construct our synapse updates. We're not actually updating them yet, though. Once backprop is done, then we update our synapses using the learning rate we initialized, then empty the update variables. Let's see some results. The predicted value is pretty off the mark at first, but with each iteration, gets better. If you want to learn more about recurrent neural nets, check out the description for links and hit that subscribe button for more programming videos. For now, I've got to go synchronize some Go routines, so thanks for watching.